This Sunday's image of the life of the risen Christ, he shares with us the image of friendship. Friendship captures the love, the joy, the deep mutuality of the relationship into which Christ invites us. A very appropriate image for Mother's Day weekend. The Greeks believed that true friends were willing to die for each other, and this is the mutual love of, of Christian community commanded by Christ and enabled by the Spirit. We worship today the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Give us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to think those things which are right, and by your goodness help us to do them. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this day comes from the 10th chapter of Acts. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Here ends the reading. Our psalm is from Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. 
abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, help us to always make a home for you within our hearts. We are grateful that you are the God both of our creating and our redeeming. Keep us steadfast in your word and gathered within the arms of your love. If I could, let me begin by paraphrasing a quote from a book that I've recently read. And the quote goes like this. If I were giving young children advice as to how they might succeed in life, I would say to them, pick out good parents and begin life in South Carolina. Now, I think that Wilbur Wright actually might have said Ohio, but then I suspect he just didn't know any better, bless his heart. I'm not sure exactly how this quote pertains to the theme for our reflection today except that it does introduce the great importance and the wondrous blessing that God has given us within families, especially today as we give thanks for our moms on Mother's Day. I've just checked up on my daughter in school via the webcam. There was a little girl sitting in the corner by herself with her head down. I watched my daughter get up from the group she was playing with and walk over to check on the little girl. She talked to her for a minute, gave her a hug, and then took her over to the big group of kids and encouraged her to play with everyone. If that's not a proud mommy moment, I don't know what is. My gosh, I'm so filled with love for this girl of mine. So writes an enthusiastic young mother on Facebook, brimming with justifiable pride in her preschooler's love of neighbor. Her parenting experience isn't new. Generations of mothers before her have marveled at their children's emerging personalities and their growing capacity for caring. But what is new about this mother's experience is the particular way that she observed her daughter's behavior. She simply turned on her computer and she watched the live feed from the classroom. Now this particular technology may not yet be widespread, but it's there and it's becoming more common. Some daycare centers use this tool and it's also used on school buses in some areas. Parents can check in on their children at any time. And some have come to see this as yet another tool in what is sometimes called helicopter parenting. And I'm sure that that's meant in the most loving and caring way. But I wonder if sometimes, as in many things in life, if that kind of hovering can become a bit excessive. But let me back up, because I'm not about to criticize any moms on Mother's Day. Today is about honoring moms and to talk about moms, but we also want to talk about God, which, which is why you have to wonder if most people think of God as, as a helicopter God, always buzzing around and controlling and interfering. Or do most people think about God and about mothers in a different way? And what different way? As a 
hand on the string god a hand on the string on the string mom reflecting on the expression helicopter parent rabbi david wolp of los angeles sinai temple proposes a new variation helium parenting in his words we should hold on to our children as a child holds on to the, to a balloon let them rise let them float on their own but keep a grasp on the strings so that they don't float away to unknown parts the time will come when we need to release the balloon but in the meantime instead of hovering from above we we should be holding lightly from below think of it as parental string theory the outcome of this style of being a mom wolf continues is different so often we forget that we're not trying to create good kids but competent kind adults self-reliance is the fruit of patience nurtured by failure encouraged by appropriate risk coddle a kid and you get a coddled kid let them soar and you get an adult at least that's wolf's opinion now let me turn the tables what if instead of talking about kids in schools or at homes that we're talking about ourselves and what if the educator or mom were not our teachers or our or our parents but rather god what sort of maternal oversight do we prefer the Almighty to exercise over us? Some of us are inclined to visualize God as the consummate helicopter parent, always hovering overhead, training, training a spotlight on us to highlight our misdeeds. This is a stern, judgmental ruler, the ultimate micromanager surveying our lives with disapproval and swift to mete out punishment. And yet, what if God relates to us in a very different way? What if God is more like Wolpe's concept of a helium parent holding gently to the end of a string as we dance on, on the wind currents? Thankfully, God doesn't seem all that interested in micromanaging our lives. Because to the contrary, the Lord seems content to leave us alone for long periods with only the slightest of tugs on the balloon string. Sometimes that touch is imperceptible and barely there. At other, other times, episodes of trouble or temptation in particular, we may suddenly feel a strong pull on the line calling, calling us back into a closer relationship. The truth of the matter is our gospel text tells us how God, how we want God to mother us. It tells us how we want God to take care of us. And that's with love. What does the text say about this love? First of all, it's a love that's specific to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. We love it, don't we, when mom chooses us, singles us out for some special love and praise. And Jesus says that we too were chosen by him even as God chose Jesus. And next, it's a love that gives us a job. Didn't we love it when mom gave us a job to do? We loved it when she asked us to help her, to work side by side with her whether it was helping to bake some cookies or to put our finger in the string when she was tying a knot on some packages. It didn't matter. We loved it. We weren't crazy about doing chores, I'll admit, but we did them because we knew we should and because it was our moms who asked. And doesn't God love us in this way too? We're tasked with helping God with the care of families and neighbors and his kingdom. We are called to bear fruit and fruit that will last. And third, the passage says it's a love in which we remain. Now remain in my love, the text says. Jesus says we remain in his love when we obey his commandments. In a sense, God's love wants the best for us. And so God asks us, even commands us, 
to live as the children of God that you and I were intended to be. And mom loved us in this way too. Our moms and our dads, well, they set some expectations. They knew when we were bad, no matter how hard we tried to conceal it. And we felt badly when we knew that they knew we had failed to live up to their highest aspirations. But on the other hand, there's a sense in which we can never be outside of God's love, even as we were never outside of our parents' love. Yes, she, she got put out with us. And yes, she got exasperated on many an occasion. And yes, she put us in time out, but we were always, always, always in her love. And we were, are always in the love of God as well. One of the great passages in scripture is found in Romans 8, 35 through 39, which essentially says, there is nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God, which is ours in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And the love of God is also a love that asks us to play nice and to share. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. At the end of the reading, Jesus says it again, this is my commandment, love each other. Well, can't you just hear mom asking us to play nice? Be nice to your brother. Take your sister with you. Well, God asks us and God loves us in this way too. God loves us enough to ask us to share his love with each other. And finally, the love of God is a love that is sacrificial. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life. When we think about all that mom did for us, well, it's pretty amazing. Is God's love any less? Did not God and Jesus Christ lay down his life for us? All of this is suggest suggestive of a healing God, a God whose hand is on the string. And sure, we feel the tug at times, we sense the slack, but we always know that God's hand is there. The relationship that we have, have or have had with our moms, indeed to any per parental figure in our lives is complex. And this is no less true of our relationship with God. A relationship that's based on love requiring a firm but gentle hand on the line. So let's give thanks on Mother's Day for God who loves us more than we can ever imagine, for moms and for all those in our life who have been willing to make such a sacrifice for our sake. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we pray that you might endow all of us with a fuller appreciation of the gift of families in which you have placed us and that you will guide us day by day that we may truly be a family of faith where love is de demonstrated at all times. And we pray for all moms that God give them wisdom, love, strength, and patience to fulfill their calling and that their lives be surrounded with joy and happiness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Together we profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, et eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and to answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love so that by their song, all creatures of land and sea and sky may call us to join with them in praise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Faithful Savior, you conquered the world with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering, especially those whose names are upon our lips or held within the quietness of our hearts. Provide for those needing medical care and point us toward life-changing responses to the needs within our own communities. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and, and parenting figures in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers. Comfort mothers who grieve and those who grieve because they cannot be mothers and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving those who shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus who living among us healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, 
This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome at God's table the sacrament of bread and wine offered each Sunday from 10 to 11 o'clock a.m. in our church parking area or within our in-person service of worship on Sundays at 11 a.m. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We again welcome you and give thanks for you, your worship with us this day. We extend our heartfelt invitation for you to join with us again next Sunday, either in person at 11 o'clock a.m. in our sanctuary at 1106 Yemen's Hall Road, or by joining us online beginning at 11 o'clock a.m. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And may you go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.